What's up, everybody? I'm Justin. I am here with Jared Petty. Howdy. And Jared, we are playing Factorio. This is episode two of our Factorio Let's Play, so go back and watch episode one if you didn't, because I do not want to have to keep explaining what sort of the core loop of this game is. Right. The close summary here is, folks, we are on the threshold of electricity. Right. This is an open world sort of mining, crafting, sandbox game where the big twist is you build big, elaborate, complex factories to eventually sort of automate everything. Hence um, the Factorio. And so now you can see I have these two electric drills. They're drawing power from these steam engines, and we have power lines sort of running up, up here, and they're powering the electric drills, and they are mining coal. And we are going to bring that coal down with conveyor belts. Oops, I don't. I need more iron. <gasps> this, is the, this is the loop of the game. You never have, oops, I need more iron. Okay, let's up our iron production. Right. Okay, now let's do this. You know, it's always around and around and around in a circle. In always way. something to do. Like housework, but fun. <laughs> exactly. That should be that's a box quote. Right a box there. quote right there. Like housework but fun. That's right. So jumping up here, and this is uh, a PC alpha game at this point. Uh, are there are any plans for uh, a console release on this that you're aware oh, of? Oh no, none that I'm aware okay. of. And I honestly, I mean, it's very mouse and keyboard. I don't yeah. see how it would work. The um, interface is built around this kind of control scheme. I'm sure someone could find a way. You yeah. know, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but that's certainly not. You know, I don't know. Maybe you should say it's impossible because then someone will try it. They'll get mad and like, oh, I could do that. And then that's you know. true. That's true. So you're about to see something cool. All right. Well, you're about to see. What do I need more of? I need oh. more. I need more everything. You're about to see more resources required. So you're scrambling back down here. So we're crashed on an alien world. Out there somewhere are indigenous peoples who are getting gradually more ticked about the fact that we're polluting their planet. But right now, we're just trying to get the lights on and survive. Yeah. We're just a squirrel trying to get an acorn. Although I did, yeah. I should uh, say that uh, I cheated a little bit and I put the game on peaceful mode. Ah. So the aliens will not attack us first. Would the aliens normally normally be kind of ticked right now come running out and uh, uh they're usually i mean they take their time okay. um I, the game if you don't set up defenses you can be overwhelmed and destroyed but mm -hmm. but the game's fairly generous with how long that takes like okay. it's very you'll be attacked by you know one little biter first and then you know then a second and then a third and it really sort of takes some time to ramp up to that so point. you will be building a defense grid to go along with well the again we're playing on yeah. peaceful yeah. Yeah, so just because i chickened out so right. um, we're not going to be seeing a tremendous amount of that in this series of yeah. Let's Plays. Okay. So you're about to see your first real piece of automation, All which, right. I mean, it's sort of nerdy how exciting this is, but All it right. actually is exciting to me. I, we're, we're sitting here playing a video game for a living. I think we've already passed <laughs> the nerdy threshold a long time yeah, ago. Fair point. All right, the Nerdy so Threshold would be a good name for a podcast. The Nerdy Threshold? That would be a good name. The Nerdy Threshold? Yeah, totally. So you're witnessing Patent it. Patent pending. So look at this. So... We have these steam engines. They're bringing electricity up to these electric miners, which are mining coal. Okay. And now these are electric inserters. And so see the direction that they're facing? See that arrow? Yeah. So what that is is that inserter is going to try – it's going to do its best to grab whatever is on this conveyor belt and shove it, you know, on the other end of the inserter. Okay. And so what it's doing is it's taking this coal that's on this conveyor belt and then it's putting it in this boiler that heats up the water. I know. We've heated the water. And so and we've just created – a automation. S a steam power automated loop. And now, like, this is just going to run on its own. We don't have to fool with this anymore, right? Nope. Um, right. And there are, you know, people that are pros at this game know the ratios of, I think it, uh, the maximum ratio is one offshore pump pumps mm -hmm. enough water to power 10 steam engines. And then I think those 10 steam engines require 14 boilers. Mm -hmm. And that's an optimal configuration that's an if optimal you're trying to build the perfect planet. Yeah, or trying to be as efficient as possible, mm -hmm. which, uh, let's be honest, I like this game a lot, but there's a certain amount of uh, autist... <laughs> That it appears the, the, that there it is, appears there is, to. There's a certain amount of obsessive compulsiveness, yeah, that, that's going to go on in this. Yeah. And, you know, but that's part of the appeal of these kinds of games. If you think about even the classic Sim City and its sequels had ways that, that some people figured out ways to layer development grids. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you remember that, but do. you could get them to count as full grids, but only take up, I think, a quarter of the space. And people figured out these super elaborate patterns just to see what was possible. If you enjoy that, that's great. These games are here for you. If you don't enjoy that, that's great too. You can build this as as casually or as complexly as you want to, and that's that's one of the things I, I like about these kind of wide open games. I mean, if you want to use uh, use this game to spell your name in the conveyor belts, I suppose you could, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you ever spelled your name with conveyor belts? I have not spelled my name with the conveyor belts. I play very much systemically. Okay. That's that's the way that I choose to play this game. I'm not playing for looks. Mm -hmm. I'm not playing to be creative. I'm playing to try to be as efficient as possible. And I think that one to ten to fourteen ratio is the correct ratio. Okay. Um, I might have inverted. It might be. Uh, 
I think it's actually 14 steam engines to 10 boilers. Ooh, I don't know. Thousands, thousands of people in the factorial community are screaming at their monitors right now. No, I mean, I don't think they're screaming because I'm almost sure I got it right. All right. Okay, there we go. So now what we're going to do is all this stuff that right now is burning coal yeah. and wood, we're going to slowly start converting it to electricity. Cool. All right. So we're going to turn this into an electric apparatus. Now we've got our electric pumps up top here. How are we building electricity down here? How is that working? So out? we're going to run electric poles. Ah, there we go. So we're going to so. take our power station and use it to fuel this area down here. So uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to think what is – and so uh, – uh, if there are any hardcore Factorio fans out there, I'm sure they're already mad about something, <laughs> yeah. something or other that I've said. But uh, I'm not really playing to be, you know, maximum efficient or anything like that. I'm just sort of trying to show off the game to some people that probably haven't seen it before. So like, there's things like there's there's if you want to get really crazy. Uh, how far away the electric lines can be when they connect. Like, they'll connect right here, but not here. Okay, so you, you know, just So you can try that. to space those out perfectly. Right. Um, and so now we're running electricity down to what's going to be, you know, one of our main areas cool. of uh, operation. And, is there uh, a real-time clock of some kind running, Justin? Is there is there a terminating event or anything that we have to worry about, or is that just the interference of aliens in a non-peaceful mode? Uh, yeah, you are running against the clock against the aliens. They're going to get more and more and more aggressive, and you have to, uh, you know, continue. So there's, there's little tricks that I've learned about Factorio, by the way, where um, little niggling things mm -hmm. like uh, uh, the direction that things go on mm -hmm. conveyor belts. And I didn't even point it out when I was up at the top mining the, the coal, but now that I'm down here, there's little tricks like to fill both sides of the conveyor belt. This is a setup that will do it for you. Okay. So by running... It's, it's this junction right here is running. So I know that this, uh, this uh, iron is running along the top. So to run something along the bottom, I just need to run it into the bottom of the conveyor belt. I see. Okay. And so now we have a nice full conveyor belt. With all and the coal you could ever want running out of it. Oh, that's iron. All the iron. Part well, we're going to need much, much, much more iron than this. Well, but never yeah, mind. I mean, we're off to a good start. Yeah. Um, and let's see. What's next? Where do we want to run this iron? I don't know. I need more. Oh, I mean, more everything. I'm suddenly having like flashes to that, that to that old card game, Waterworks. Did you ever play that? I never played Waterworks. Yeah, Waterworks was a game about building pipes with cards. It's a lot of fun. Wow. Uh, yeah, you you had to lay them out on the table and build a working uh, plumbing system, and it was uh, largely about trying to build your own while screwing other people over. I love games like that. Nice. Oops. Uh, uh oh. <gasps> That's fine. Uh, it's easy to pick things up and rearrange things. You'll be doing a lot of this. You'll lay a lot of track and uh -huh. think you have it laid out all perfectly, and then you'll realize later that you, you know, actually, oops, I screwed this way up. It's okay. not even remotely correct. Um, Is there any penalty for just tearing down and starting over? Nope, not at all. When you tear it down, it just goes right into your inventory. You just get it back. So this and, and again, speaking of ratios, people know the ratio for the exact number of uh, drills that you need to fill you know, a conveyor belt moving at this speed, you eventually right. get faster conveyor belts. And, and so all that's and so available forth. out on guides, wikis, things like that that people can yep. read. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so all I'm doing is, again, I know that I'm going to need a lot of space, so I'm thinking I might do my smelting here. Like oh. I'm thinking about earmarking this as space for, like, a smelting facility of some okay. kind. Speaking of which, we're going to need quite a bit of stone. Um, so I'm just trying to run some track over here because we got good. So to smelt, you need the raw resources, which okay. in this case is uh, iron and copper. And then you need a decent amount of coal. And, and what so will smelting allow you to do? Uh, we're doing it on a small scale right here. Mm -hmm. We have a furnace that's turning. So these are the raw resources. We're running raw resources over. Yeah. And what we're about to do is build more stone furnaces that will turn those raw resources into the iron plate, ah. which is one of the key parts. Pretty much everything requires iron, iron plate. plate. All right. Iron plate is like the building block that everything sort of stems from. You, okay. need, you need a lot of copper in the late game, but not so much in the early game. So iron plate is just super vital for almost everything. Like you said, there's a fairly limited uh, pool of resources to choose from. Yeah. So the fact that you can focus on these is kind of nice. So you zoomed out uh, during the first video and showed us this entire world and said that we're actually going to – that space becomes a problem. No, space never becomes a problem. Oh, um, I, I'm, we, I was just illustrating how much space eventually – Everything you can see here will be built yeah. up okay. with, you know, uh, you know, structures and other things, and even beyond that. Yeah. But the worlds are infinite. They they're, really are infinite. They're okay. Micro, There's they're no like, like as, I mean, it's you, know, you will never run out of space. That's so really that's cool. that's a good piece of advice for beginning builders. Yeah. Is uh, you know, take up as much space as you could ever possibly want to take up okay. because uh, because you're never gonna run out. 
Thank you. You actually stated that in the in the uh, earlier, and I just got confused. That's fine. Apologies. All right. So let's there. Kind of going around. Look at. There's a heavy creative mode vibe to this whole game. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of, uh, a lot of opportunities to just sort of experiment and see what you want to do next. So you're going to smelting. Uh, you said that there's an end game. What's the tree? What's the path? To the uh, end game? We can't show the tree yet. Um, not that it's a secret or anything like that, but just uh, it's unlocked over. Well, actually, here's the tree, okay. but it's not laid out in a tree. Like yeah. so, you just kind of need to know. Like you'll see, oh, armor crafting three requires armor crafting two and requires to speed module. So probably the first thing we're going to unlock is automation, and that lets you build the assembling machines that let you start automating everything. Okay. Or maybe logistics, which lets you do things like, uh, you know, splitting these in two. You know, splitting your conveyor belts into right. things of that nature. Fantastic. All right, so now you're building your whole uh, smelting area. Yeah, where uh, while we wait, while we wait for it to be automated, I'm just going to go ahead and let some of this run. Okay. Um, is there uh, is there any way to? I guess you're running around so much. There's no need to worry about time lapses or anything like that, right? No, I mean some let's players time lapse because you do spend a lot of time on kind of the mundane. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, you and I are being just so charming no, there's, and there's entertaining. All, all we are, and there's not... always something to do in this world. I mean, obviously, who would not want to hang out with us? Honestly, uh, there's a, there's a sofa in this room right now. I kind of wish we had four or five other people hanging out. We're we're that entertaining. I mean, I, I I'd want to hang out with us right now. You get a high Absolutely. opinion of us. What's that? You have a high opinion of us. I do, I do. I, I mean, it, we're we're a we're a modern day Gilbert and Sullivan. Absolutely. We were singing the Jurassic Park theme earlier. So once again, now we're building these inserters yeah. that are going to insert the raw material into the furnace. Okay. Um, and again, you can see it sort of building the constituent parts first down there in the corner, which I think is a neat little... It just feels good. It's satisfying. Hit the R button to rotate things, and it's okay. facing the direction that you want. And facing really does matter, as you showed earlier with the uh, yeah, electrical... And so now we're placing the inserters. Everyone has like sort of their own system for how they like to lay things out. I mm -hmm. like this system. I leave. I left a gap here because uh, that lets me do things like I'm going to need to place these power poles. Okay. And it's so, like this is an example of that's a really simple example, but you know, there's better examples later of like if you'd never played this game, you wouldn't know you needed to leave a gap for power poles. You okay. Know? But I've played. I know that. And so got my power poles placed. Got all my inserters fired up. Now they are inserting the raw materials into here, but what's missing? Uh, well, let's see. We don't have any raw material. We have raw materials. We have. Do we have electricity now? We just ran electricity. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's missing. What's missing is the fuel. Okay. So uh -huh. we have to pump in uh, coal. Yeah, we have to pump That's right. in coal. You that exactly we need right. that too. So is that more conveyor belts? Um, actually, I might have done things in the wrong order here because we need long inserters, okay. and those aren't unlocked by default, which means I need... So sort of the, the, the core conceit of the game is you eventually unlock these flasks, mm -hmm. or they're technically science packs. A lot of people in the community call them flasks. Why do they call them flasks? Because they look like flasks. Oh. Oh, you're right. They do look like flasks. <laughs> okay, but there we go. And so, but again, for sitting too far from the monitor, we need ten pieces. We need ten raw science to unlock long-handed inserters, and we will eventually. If uh, you've been following along, you know what I'm going to say. We will eventually automate. Yep. The creation of of red science. Um, we can't quite do that yet. So we will create ten red science. So you really are kind of building a robot here. You know, this is um, you're building a factory, like yeah. a big factory that can eventually be self-sustaining. People in the community have actually built factories capable of self-replicating. Oh wow! Build, build a factory, factories that build factories. Build a factory that can build itself. Oh, well, you know, there's, there's some real-world precedent for that. I mean, the, to a large extent now, computers design computers. People mm -hmm. build computers and, and software that design smarter computers and software uh, at a degree that would take a human being much longer to do. So, you know, it's kind of a... What do you think about uh, the, the development of, of increased automation here in the world, Justin? Uh, uh, the fact that software is approaching a, a level of, of artificial intelligence that's, uh, that's well kind of uncanny. Yes. Uh, it's what do you think about it? It's super spooky, isn't yeah. it? I mean, that's a super valid point of view. I mean, smarter people than me are concerned about it, so uh -huh. that makes me concerned about it, for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm not concerned about it in Factorio. I just think it's a tremendous amount of fun. It's a lot of fun in Factorio. What if Factorio, like, becomes sentient? I mean, <laughs> what's it, what's it going to think? Well, then we're in real trouble. Are we? So we're making red science down here at the yeah. bottom, um, and now you can see we're going to build a science lab. That's what this is, and then what we'll we? plop that science lab down and... Uh, and, uh, you know, just go to town. It's just going to generate more science? It's just going to generate more science. Will it science. blind you? Well, we will not be blinded with science. Oh, I was kind of hoping we'd be blinded with science for a second there. Science! All right. 
So we've got this going on here now. It's turned night again. And again, night doesn't seem to have any real effect on the gameplay except to allow lighting effects to happen, right? Yeah, very Do you have weather lighting. effects or anything like that to worry about? No weather effects. You know, again, the game being in alpha, some of that stuff, yeah. uh, it, those sorts of bells and whistles may or may not yeah. be, uh, you know, brought into the game later. Well, you don't want to overburden the game either. And again, you so talked about the mod community. People do all kinds of things with that. We're eventually going to build a whole science community. We're going to automate the creation oh. of those flasks. For now, I'm just going to plop it down wherever because all I'm going to do is drag those 10 science packs in there I made. And now we're researching a technology here at the top, and you can see that there's a nifty little animation. Nothing says animation. science like a geodesic dome. You go to Epcot Center, you know that's about science. Uh, well, Jared, our time once again is up. All right. This has been Justin and Jared Play Factorio. In Episode 3, we will finish researching automation. Ooh. What that unlocks for us are long-handed inserters and assembling machines, and that's going to allow us to do all kinds of fun stuff, including get an automated smelting machine oh! up and running. I've always wanted an automated smelting machine. Well, who hasn't? I, 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 I wouldn't want to meet anyone who didn't. Everybody, more Factorio on Jared and Justin Play Factorio coming up very soon.